All right, guys, what is up? So I did say I was going to do a Rust tutorial series right when Rust left early access, but because of time and all sorts of other problems, also some performance issues I was having uh, with my computer. I'm still having a little bit, so you're going to see some stutters probably here now and then. Um, and that's just because my hard drives are super old and just not doing too well. Also, Rust is kind of eating a lot of RAM right now. Uh, it's using uh, like 16 gigs. Anyways, um, <laughs> that aside, we're going to do a cover for the basic resources that you're going to get in game. So this is for brand new people. This isn't for people who have been playing the game. This is something, you know, how to, where to, and the basics and how it works. So when you first spawn, of course, you're going to have a rock. Uh, mine has a nice little turkey skin. The rock is your first way to get any resource besides there are some pickups. So you'll see right here, you can pick up this stone or you can pick up this metal. And then there's also a little sulfur pickups, which are yellowish. Um, that's a way you can pick up some stone. But I mean, the easiest way is going to be finding stone nodes and hitting them with your rock. And uh, it, it's going to take a little bit of a while to get what you need to get that going. And the same thing is you're gonna have to start with a rock on a tree. Now, you'll notice a rock gives you five wood. Also, you'll notice this X. Now, if you hit the X consecutively, you'll start to get a bonus. You see, now it's going up to six, seven, eight, eight, nine, 10. And I believe the rock caps out at 10. Okay. Yep. That looks about right. And uh, yeah. So once you get stuff going, you can go ahead and make a stone hatchet. Hitting just the tree anywhere will yield you 10. And you can get up to a 10 bonus. At the end, you'll get a kind of big hit where it'll give you just with the rest of what's in the tree. Now, the stone or rock with harvesting will give you less, but all other tools give you the same amount from each resource. So let's say, you know, this tree has a thousand wood in it. Using a better tool isn't gonna give me 2000 wood. You'll always get the thousand. It's how fast you harvest, okay? So as again, you'll see it starts out at 10. And with a bonus, we'll get all the way up to 20, all right? So that's that there. The next best thing is gonna be a metal hatchet. That's gonna start with giving you 15. But if you hit the bonus parts, you can get up to 30, which is nice. Small trees always kind of give a bit of a weird amount. They do give eventually as much as a regular size tree. But you'll wanna keep playing this little mini game, hitting the X. And like I said, sometimes it's frustrating. Like right now we have to kind of like crouch and get in there. But it also keeps you moving around the tree, which keeps you aware of your surroundings. You definitely want to kind of pay attention as anyone creeping up on you. Because when you're hitting a tree, especially at night, it's going to get pretty loud. So as you see right there, it capped out at that 30. And there you go, you get the bonus at the end. Now, there is also the salvaged axe, which you'll notice starts out at 25. And actually, I believe goes all the way up to 50. Yeah, it, okay, that tree kind of ran out of wood, but it should go up to a total of 50 per hit with the bonus there. And lastly, there is the chainsaw. So once you find yourself a chainsaw, these can be found in the like uh, work crates. There's kind of like tool crates that you can find around. Uh, pressing R will refill it. You need low grade fuel to run this guy. And then you gotta right click to start it. Sometimes you have to do multiple times to start. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have to do the mini game with this. You just literally just go up to a tree and saw away at it. And boom. Chainsaw is pretty awesome. <laughs> It's very great. And there you go, you just tear right through the trees. So it's the fastest way, but it's the loudest way, and it costs a little bit. 
Uh, cool thing is with the new compound monument, you can actually go and buy a chainsaw with scrap. So in case you're having a hard time finding one, you can always get one from the scientist vending machines, uh, which is a very cool little thing there. Next, we're going to look at nodes. And as you can see, there's a node right here. This is a metal node. And here we've got a stone node as well as a sulfur node. So the way the nodes work, again, stone is going to give you the least amount. You'll also notice that there's a shiny part on rocks. Now, if you just hit it, you get five, right? If you hit the shiny part, you can get seven. And again, it will go up consecutively with the rock, all right? Now, each node only gives its own resource. So you're only going to get metal from a metal node. You're only going to get sulfur from a sulfur node. And you're only going to get stone from a stone node, all right? Just hitting it, you get 16 with the bonus. You can get up to 24. The metal pickaxe is going to hit you with 30. And the salvage is going to hit you with 50, which you can also get up with the consecutive bonus and two high quality at the end of every metal ore node. One thing here is there's no comparable version of the chainsaw as of yet for the stone nodes or well mining nodes, but eventually it's meant to where you use these survey charges and you'll actually be able to throw them and they'll blow up and uh, out will pop resources if you find some and then you can use those to kind of do like blast mining inside of caves or like node hotspots but that's something that hasn't quite made it into the game itself uh, as you'll see here this is actually a little sulfur pickup as well right there so that covers pretty much the uh, basics of the different types of nodes and your basic resources but your next basic thing is going to be animals that you're going to need. So the easiest thing to do is honestly get a bow. A lot of animals are either very fast or they might be aggressive. Uh, deer will attack you if you're close enough or if you uh, hit them and you're nearby. Boars will attack if you get too close to them and then kind of run away. Bears and wolves will continue to attack you until their health has gone down low enough. So once you hit an animal, you can get your arrows back. You want to pick them up first because once you break the body, that is it. There's nothing, you know, you're not going to be getting them. They don't drop on the ground. Now, hatchets are probably your best at getting resources from them. But once you have some bones, you want to go ahead. <laughs> but it's a snowball. Anyways, you're going to want to make yourself a bone knife. And the bone knife is going to be your best for harvesting the resources. Now, obviously a bear is gonna give you probably the most amount of stuff. It's gonna get you the most leather, the most cloth, the most fat, and the most meat. You can get about 19 bear meat off of it. And uh, bear meat's pretty well for sustenance, uh, so that's actually pretty good there. And that's your basic resources, guys. Uh, once you have some cloth and some animal fat, you can turn that to low-grade fuel, which is needed to, you know, fuel the chainsaw, fuel a few other things like boats that you'll find around as well as make your furnaces which is how you're going to process your ore so that is kind of the basics right there guys and uh one thing i didn't actually show that i'm seeing here in the distance is going to be this uh wood pickup right here so i mentioned there was pickups for all the ore there's also for the wood you'll see little stumps you can pick them up for 50 wood and of course hemp will be growing around you pick these up they give you cloth as well as hemp seeds which you can go ahead and plant which grow or you can put them into a full-on planter and do full farming but that's something for a little bit different farming is going to get an overhaul and we want to make sure that uh, we cover it when that happens there so we will be right back guys i'll show you one last way to get some more resources Another resource that you may want to uh, think is noteworthy is the cactus. You can actually harvest them for a small amount of cloth as hemp isn't very prominent in the desert. And cactus flesh, eating cactus flesh will actually replenish water in a teeny tiny bit of food. So this is also a very useful thing if you're down in the deserty area to pay attention for as well.
in the world of Rust, there are also three different uh, resource stations or so. Now, you'll see there's like kind of a circle around me here on the map. Um, let's focus and zoom in. And you see it's kind of like an odd circle. Well, if you look for one of those on the map, most of the times it'll bring you to one of these little monuments here. And this is a water pump. So you can actually go up to it, pump it, water's going to fill in here, and you can uh, go ahead and fill water jugs or other things, or just uh, take a nice drink from this and fill up your water, which is pretty awesome. Another useful thing to keep an eye out for, which is actually mar marked on the maps themselves, are quarries, and they'll be marked with the type of resource that they give. You'll see this one here is a sulfur quarry. You can also find ones that give out metal as well as high quality. And basically you're gonna come up to it and this is a monument and you're gonna have this machine here and you used to be able to place these yourself. You can't any longer, okay? And you're gonna go in here and you're gonna put some fuel in. You're gonna have to go around the other side, climb a ladder and start the engine. As you'll see, the machine starts running and it's gonna start collecting for you. And about every so often, you'll see it'll start grabbing some stuff. Now the thing is, you could wall this in, but it'd be quite the feat, so you're gonna have to be very aware when you're using this. Uh, hopefully have a buddy, or if you're not, you can always perch yourself up on top and pay attention, because people are gonna try to come here and steal it from you. So this is more risky of a uh, resource gatherer, but it can be pretty handy if you are in a secluded area or know there's no one that's gonna bother you. Last, we've got the pump jack, which is a way of getting crude oil. Crude oil converts into low-grade fuel when burned in a refinery, and it works exactly like the quarry. So let's go ahead, and I actually messed up and didn't keep my low-grade. So you're gonna do pretty much the same thing. You're gonna climb up the ladder this time, though. You're gonna go up here, stick some low-grade in there, and start and you'll see the pump jack starts going again this makes noise you're going to want to be careful and down here in front is where the crude oil is going to pop out uh, for every one low grade used you get about i think it's every two or so you get a uh, crude oil but you can burn the crude oil for more of a return so it is actually worth it you can get quite a few bit of fuel this way uh running it at night it, you know you might not have as good clarity to see people but it might not be as risky again it is pretty loud so it's something you want to pay attention to there but that does it for this tutorial guys we'll be back with some more we'll be covering scrap and research and how all of that stuff works in the next time and uh we'll be covering anything else if you have suggestions of how to do these videos better or uh, things you'd like me to mention in the future ones, and uh, any kind of subjects you'd like me to do an actual full tutorial video on, just let me know. I already have quite a few planned, but there might be something in my head that I have missed. So please go ahead and do that. Please leave a like, guys, and we will see you next time for another Rust tutorial.